Remember when everyone complained about cars 2 going off in a different direction to the first? Isn't going the detective route with Nomeo and Juliet a similar case? I would talk about the actual movie, but I generally don't remember anything other than that Johnny Depp was stuck in this monstrosity. Early Man's failure led to every Aardman film since skipping the theatrical movie market altogether. I quite enjoyed the film for what it was, but I think a lot of this is due to being a casual fan of football or soccer as you call it in the States. I've never watched an episode of Teen Titans, so my opinion on this movie is from an outside perspective. That being said, Teen Titans Go to the Movies is probably the most I've ever laughed in a movie theatre. The last good piece of content we've gotten in the Hotel Transylvania franchise before it all fell off a cliff with more recent content. The change in location made this franchise feel fresh and a contender for one of the most fun summer movies in recent years. Illumination sure don't push boundaries. Their mould for storytelling is often simplistic and easy to consume for younger children, but there was something about the Grinch which isn't present in many Illumination movies. The special ingredient seems to be heart. This is most evident in flashback form going back to the Grinch as an orphan. On its initial release in 2018, I found Into the Spider-Verse kind of boring. I think a lot of this was likely due to my 14 year old brain not being able to comprehend the revolutionary visuals showcased on screen. My opinion has completely 180'd since revisiting this film after Across the Spider-Verse. Now that I'm more well versed in the Spider-Man lore, I can appreciate all the easter eggs and visually stunning graphics on screen. I'll never put up a case claiming that Ralph Breaks the Internet is a good film because it's really not. There's so many reasons to hate this film. Taking us into the internet was such a strange creative choice. Dumbing down Ralph certainly didn't go over too well with so many people, and the lack of presence from Felix or Calhoun was frustrating. All this being said, I can't help but enjoy this film. Just seeing some of my favourite characters in film history and returning to Litwax Arcade, even if just for 20 minutes, all made Wreck-It Ralph 2 a thoroughly enjoyable film, at least for me. Take everything I said about Ralph Breaks the Internet and insert it in here. Once again, this is a very diversive sequel, with Incredibles 2 ultimately leaving many fans disappointed. My biggest complaint is actually the lack of Dash in here. He was always one of the best parts of the first Incredibles, but in here he was given almost nothing to do. 